disease, maybe? Exactly that. Someone who carries a disease that blights the lives of other people and doesn't affect him at all. Oh, yes. I think I heard that spoken of all right. Mr. Joyce, how many people of your close acquaintance have committed suicide? Do you know the answer? Seven. Mother of God, no. Seven. Or there will be before you've done. Do you know when that will be due? Oh, yes, we know all right. But don't worry about it. We won't tell you. In the madness, there's that as well. I will not go there. No, as I've said, you're a carrier. Also, it seems to me you'll understand. Disasters, disruptions, and mental afflictions seem to spring from you. That's not true. Then the coincidence is striking. I do blame myself for Lucia. The spirit she has is mine. But that's none of your business. But that's where you're wrong, old artificer. You've made your life everybody's business. No fiction for you that's brave. But no quarter either. Face it, Lucia is not in my books. Not all of her, and that's the very point, you see. It's the bit you've thrown away that we're interested in. The debris. Do you want this to go on? It's not until now I realized it is true. Yet half a beast was the great god Pan. <laughs> you tell him, Mrs. The true god sigh for the cost and pain of the reed that grows never more again as a reed with the reeds by the river. You're a maker of debris when all's said and done. The Nazis would find a proud place for you. Why don't you stay on and join them at it? You and your clique. What you imply is that at least is not true. No, keep off politics over here all night. Keep off my daughter. I'm paying for that for years now. So you say. Well, maybe so. You'll never pay enough, it's my belief, but we'll leave that. Lucia is locked away at Pornichet. Your son's wife is locked away at Sirene. That's hysteria, nothing more. Your son himself has difficulties. Your wife has monstrous difficulties and is thinking of giving them up. She will not leave me. But the man who's been your best friend for the past ten years had to leave you. You didn't give him much choice. You dismissed him behind his back without a word of thanks, just because he dared to tell you the truth. He was against my son. I must have loyalty. I depend on trust. And what about Martha Fleischmann? The romantic affair in Zurich that threw your wife's trust to the winds. Oh, yes. Whatever happened to Martha Fleischmann when he dropped her? Hmm? Yes. She went into an asylum, too. But why is it breaking now? Everything breaking apart when it should be strongest. I can't finish like this, falling away. Surely there's more. There must be a lot more to come. But you just don't know where it'll come from. That's the penalty. When you go, when you leap to the outermost reaches too soon, you have to walk back empty handed. Only see you walking back. Back. This is exactly how I felt at the beginning. The first time all my plans were broken asunder. Ah, but I had time then. Time and determination to mend it then. I, I had proof then. My own certainty of the man I would become and of the work I would do. I did do it. I did win. Everybody knows that. Everybody else knows it. The judges of such matters are swinging in my favor. Oh, they'll walk wearily for a year or two before they see, discover. There's nothing else. If I keep my fists tight shut, who can guess? What I've placed before them will last their lifetime. And a lifetime over. My insurance policy is in good order. But that's for them later. For me. No. Debris. I wonder what. 
what Daedalus did with the shavings. And if he'd had a daughter, would he have taught her how to fly? Poor Lucia, but Lucia for light, sunlight, too close, too high. Auden has a fine poem about Icarus. He catches it exactly the afternoon at the dying fall. Says nothing about the cause of it, though. I know about the cause of it. And any man who can design a labyrinth should be able to find his way home. To Dublin? Will you go to Dublin? I never left Dublin. How could I go back? There's been a revolution, you know. Not here. They've split it in two. Ireland. Across the way, is it? Mm. Ireland was always split in two. From top to bottom, as I recall. English on top, Irish at the bottom. Priests on top, Irish at the bottom. The same arrangement of essentials. And hard to breed out of any man. They could give you a passport. They'd be glad to. I may be many things, but I am not a traitor. Who would you betray? Who I used to be. Who needed no passport to prove he was Irish. Who bore the bruises of it plain enough. It's marvellous, that. Isn't it marvellous? What can be made out of bitterness? What fuel it is for so many enterprises. Particularly Irish enterprises. More particularly still, my enterprise. When they wander at my fortitude and determination, I let them think it's sheer love of life has been the spur. They'll take that. That's affirmative. That's Molly Bloom's rapture, is Yes. The old boot. How far in the sneering world would the rapture, is yes, take me? When they were all turned in a deaf ear and allowed a rapture, is no. It's rapture, not rapture, that makes a mark. You need nails like tenors to get through. In those times, bitterness is a never-failing ally. There's a flame that will burn, though hell does freeze over. You've concealed it very well. Oh, yes. That's part of the strength. You never let it show naked. I discovered that when Dublin it was published, even before it was published. In there, you can just see the glittering edge of it. Makes people uneasy. I never used it as material again. I kept it as fuel. But you've nothing to be bitter about now. I bear it. <laughs> I bear it. It's not subject to reason. You're gone, Miss Bitch. It's congenital. Do you think I choose to have it? I was born with it. I said, I'm such a good use for it. And now, because I can't spew it out in my work, it's working in me, eating away steadily inside me. That's why they're puting accusations mean damn more. What are they accusing me of? What can they muster against me? Hypocrisy? Yes. While I'm genuflected and said me offices of the Blessed Virgin every day, I scurried off down to a brothel every night I could afford it. Meanwhile, I was composing my great aesthetic on truth and beauty. Hypocrisy? Versatility. Pride. Yes. It was pride kept me from getting an honest job, sport, wife and family. With my talent, it's lack of pride that would have been criminal. Revenge. Yes. I brought all my enemies to book and I don't regret it. The only thing I fear on that score is that I might overlook some faint slur on me or mine. Drunkenness. Yes, though I know it gives pain to those that love me, I know much more clearly I like to get drunk. And there's that selfishness. And selfishness is long out with all the others. Or do you see the sheer love of life shining through? Or do you see the sharp, black glitter of bitterness? I pity you, Mr. Joyce. I wish that was enough. I'd even take that now if it was enough. Oh. 
for me poor eyes. Oh, God bless your eyes. Oh, thanks very much. He's done his best. As you know, God's best is half and half. I'm half blind. But, oh, the pain to keep me half blind has tortured a broad path to the back of my skull. Scraping, cutting, piercing, sucking. First one, then the other. Calcification, atrophy. Conjunctivitis, cataract, glaucoma. Operation after operation. For oh, the smell of iodine and scopolamine. The suffocating bandages. And the leeches. You know, they put on leeches maybe six at a time to draw the blood out of the sockets of the eyes. God, there must be hardly things. Eyes to take all that. And still I can see dimly. It must be a terrible thing. Don't pity me just for that. Because I've half the eyesight you have. No. Sure, I could create more stone blind than you could with a hundred eyes. Standing you that. And in spite of the pride, drunkenness, selfishness, hypocrisy, revenge, he knew that I was master of my craft. And because of that, maybe, he forgave me all the rest. Remind me of Stanley. So you said? When we were young. Yes. He knew all about saving the morning in the supperless bedtimes, composed from him to the youngest, so that you could go shod and breakfast eaten to classes. A family of ten, wasn't it? Half of them played enchanters. Ah, but you were there to vindicate the fact that they were born. Vindicate? I was there to do the best I could. I did nothing else. Are they proud of you? Those that are still living? And those of them that can write letters seem to be. My father was. Ah, but he's dead now, too. He died on the 29th of December, 1931. And it was the day after I ceased to care about anything else I might do. And it was then... It was then that Lucia first started to go mad. And for eight years, I watched her falling. Plunging down into such wild disorder that I could. And sometimes she seems to be taunting me, daring me to come close enough that I'd be affected too, that we could fall together. And at other times, she's just like an animal that no one dares approach, so armed with venom. And yes, even in that, there's an uncanny brilliancy sparks it that only I can understand. There's so much of me there. It's a terrible thing to watch. It's like a dream, where disaster unfolds with that awful slowness that makes it seem all the more inevitable. But, oh, how high she must have been. How high to fall for eight years. And however far she goes, I'll catch her. I will not, I will not knock her up in an asylum and forget her, just because it terrifies me. I will not give up hope to her, just because her brain oh, oh. <laughs> Even if it means we have to be left alone together, I'll take that chance too. Ah, but I should have started sooner. I should have seen the first signs. I deserved to lose my sight then, when I did not use it for what mattered most. 
Here. Do you think that's likely? Oh, not just Lucia. There's other people, too. The uninteresting bits I ignored. That sounds like an old wives' tale. But I believe in old wives' tales. Oh, no, said was more than me, she had them. Very superstitious, I mean. I believe in spells and magic, of course. Uh, the real seer, Mr. Joyce, uses the mind's eye. But out of sight. Out of mind. A god isn't damnable. If you wait long enough, the most commonplace phrase takes on its real significance. Never be able to hear that phrase again without thinking of madness. You are just playing with words. Just? Is that what I've given my life to? A seer? Is that what you think I am? You didn't give me one. The eulogies. You didn't dance yours to the others. I have one. Longer than Burns, I hope. Burn? No, of course you can't have been. He's in New York. <laughs> Well, so far. So far away like that. So far, I'm not dead yet. Anyway, that's one comfort of your heart, stuck for comfort. So far. He has just been preparing the tools for the job. It has taken a while, but then he had to design them as well. Also, he had to accumulate the raw material that he was going to use them on. This is like a report card, or Stanley's where he shit last diary. Don't tell me what it means to me. Tell me what I mean to you. String me a line of virtues to hang me shot on. Even one would be a pleasant surprise. After Courage. What's that? Courage. It's the only virtue that everybody would let you keep. Is it enough to let me loose, do you think? I'm sure it is. But even if not, it'll have to do, because I can't think of anything else. Oh, what poverty of imagination. Stevens now, a fine young man like yourself. He said I was the kindest man he ever met. They must have wanted something out of him, or he never have noticed it. He did wanted her to take over Finnegan's way completed. <laughs> Nora said I was a great lover. Uh, a while ago. Leeds said it was brilliant. Brilliance isn't a virtue. Scott Fitzgerald said it was a saint. Enough to throw himself at the window for me. And? Am I? No, did he? No. Not to be trusted. <laughs> Seems to me that what you are most is a swashbuckler. And something of a pirate. A pirate on the lookout for dross that he can convince the world is gold. And I did. Oh, you did. It's just one little point you've overlooked. By the time I had convinced them it was gold, it was gold. So, I was gold along the was along with an independent air. You can hear the girls declare, you must be a millionaire. You can hear them sigh and hope to die And see them wink the other eye The man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo <laughs> I could have been a singer once. I suppose that's why I wanted it so much for Georgie. Oh, well, not for Georgie, for you. Hmm? Yes. And because it's come to nothing, he thinks he's failed me. Fail? How in God's green earth can you fail? if you stay your own man throughout. You had quite a pleasant voice, you said. Here's another old one. For the girl I love was beautiful, I'll have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praties grow. She was just the sort of girl, me boys, that nature did intend. To walk right through the world, me boys, without a Grecian bend. Nor did she wear a chignon, I'll have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praises grow. Fine. 
Some bloody pilot and run was disguised as a refugee. Though, there was a time when I boarded English literature and changed its course to mine. Set sail for a vast new country. Not a better country, maybe, but a new one, because I was equipped to explore it. And I'd make an explorer of every bugger in the crew before I'm done. For as far as I've come, it's been worth it. 